So let's be clear before we start this segment. All of these teams, they won a championship. There's nothing we can take away from them. This isn't a diss segment. Mm -hmm. we're, we're highlighting teams that overperformed. They were underdogs. They overachieved. They fought their way to a title game, and they, they pulled it out. They upset these teams. James, what teams come to mind when you think of the best underdog slash the worst teams to win a championship the last 20 years? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start with football because I think we all agree that these Giants teams, man, like... Eli, Eli is a guy who, when he's there, he's great. When he's there, it's like that uncle that you don't get to see very much. But when he shows up, he shows up. And, you know, it's a great thing. And uh, this 2007 Giants team in, in particular, man, you're going to, not only are you, people complain about the NFC East right now. The NFC East has been bad for a while. And this year, the NFC East was not too different from this current NFC East. And uh, when they come out of that division, just that's the only way that they're, they're even in this whole entire dance. They end up beating the undefeated Patriots, who inarguably top three like football team of all time. That's like what takes over the story almost. It's not how like mediocre the Giants were. It's the fact yeah. that they were mediocre and they played probably the best football team ever. Yeah, no, th this was a this was a team of destiny, and I think this is going to be a common theme with a lot of these. Is that the magic of the moment is going to overcome how bad you are? Yeah, because it doesn't really matter when it's just one game to win it all. So. You know, whether it be the Tyree catch, whether it be like certain things that had to happen in order for this moment to occur, every, it's like the stars aligned and this very, very mediocre football team ended up pulling off the biggest upset on the biggest stage in sports, which is insane. I'm gonna go flip sports to the, the Phillies here. This 2008 Phillies team. Now, people don't understand that they did have some names that people can, you know, household names people can under, you know, recognize. But in this year, the Mets, if, if the games ended in the eighth inning, the Mets would have been 12 games up on the Phillies and the Phillies would not have even made the playoffs. The fact that they were even here was just because of an, an ineptitude of someone else's bullpen. Like, they had no business even making the playoffs. So when they go off on, on this run, round after round, surprising people, it, it it was kind of a magical thing for Philly, and I'm not gonna compare it to the Eagles Super Bowl because that was like in in its own thing. But but damn, you you had to have been surprised. This was a team I rocked with a lot in like MLB The Show because they had yeah. Ryan Howard and Chase Fan Utley favorites. and Roy Holiday, and they went back next year. They played the Yankees in '09 and yeah. lost. So they were like a team that maybe you didn't expect, but they they proved their worth eventually. It's the, it's the one team on this list that I like want to give more credit to, but I, I see where you're coming from because yeah, the Mets. If the Mets weren't the Mets, the Phillies wouldn't have even had a shot at this. Yeah, and lastly, I'm gonna go. I'm almost you know swallow my own pride here. This 2005 Steelers team, man. I'm glad we won, and I and you know it, we sent you know Bill Cowher off in a in a, in a great parade, but uh, we we should have won this game. We shouldn't have even been there. Big Ben was not good. He was a rookie, and. Quite frankly, you remind you of Tara Bausch on the way he was a complete dumbass. <laughs> Who was the Seahawks quarterback? Is like Hasselback? Like, Hasselback. Like, like that's like a Super Bowl against Matt Hasselback. I, I feel like okay. if, okay. if, but, if, but we, if we were traded up. to a, a Steelers Seahawks Super Bowl with those teams today, I think the world would be pretty disappointed. I guess it was a different place back then. I'm just saying that there was first of all, we were the worst team. And we were the worst seed. Like in, in entire playoffs of the year, we were the worst team, the worst seed, and. For us to have uh, come out of the AFC that year, I think is, is it's almost like, maybe you could say we won the Super Bowl when we came to the AFC, but winning winning a chip that year with, with uh, Jerome Bettis on his last legs, rookie Big Ben, like, you gotta say that's that's nothing short of a mirror. What a weird year. It what was a weird a, Super Bowl. <laughs> weird Super Bowl, but hey, um, I would know, take Steelers Seahawks to this day. I, I think, you know, today's NFL, that'd be a it's fantastic NFL, game. Sick. No, I hope that happens. But uh, yeah, I, I, last honorable mention, I'll say the 2019 Nats, you know, they, they uh, did not seem to have any kind of shot 50 games in the season last they year. They lost that season a couple times before they finally won it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, anything from, you know, you want to call Scherzer getting smacked in the face by that semi-hilarious batting practice incident. Like, there are a lot of things that went wrong for them, but the magic of the baby shark, you know, what are you going to do? All right, so we're, um, for my list, I want to swing over to the NBA for what I think is probably one of the most expected teams to be on here. This list, for me, is in honor of the Heat making the finals because I still just think that's a, a travesty to the sport that this team managed oh, to man. scheme their way in. Another story. Well, you just mad the Celtics a lot. Fair okay. enough, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to wind it back to 2011, Dirk Nowitzki on the Mavericks. That team made an unprecedented run. They beat the Blazers with Brandon Roy, beat the Lakers with Kobe, beat the Thunder with Russ, KD, and Harden, and then beat LeBron and Wade in the finals. And, you know, they got Jason Terry, they got Sean Marion, Tyson Chandler, Jason K Like, they got these guys that, like, you, you, you look at and you respect. 
but none of them are the second best player on a championship team. None of them, like today, would you it's consider true. that. Dirk Nowitzki, his whole career, like, was in the tier of Duncan and Garnett, but was never given that status, that respect, because he never got it done. He never, never won the ring. And this year, I don't know what happened. He had the flu one of those games, and he, he just, it was, like, it's prime Dirk. It's like, this, this is God mode Dirk. Like, he just can't be guarded. Yeah, no, it was funny just seeing, like, LeBron and Wade try to say that Dirk was pulling a pandemic or something. And yeah. like, he was under some fake illness, but I'm glad that that, that showed the world that, Team basketball playing the game the right way can go so far in, in in any in any era. Moving the ball around, playing the game the way it's supposed to be, that's the way you beat teams that are better than you. And you saw that with the Heat against the Celtics. Like there's a way to dismantle teams that are better than you just by Oh, news, news flash! Playing better basketball. That team, that, that was refreshing to see. That team didn't realize it, but they like implemented like kind of a new modern offense when when they played Dirk at the five, which wasn't mm -hmm. much, and they had Terry and Marion and other all those guys out there. Like they were like a very heavy three point team. Like that, that they racked up points that way. And this this tall, lanky European dude beat LeBron James and Dwayne Wade in the championship. That's unprecedented. No, that that run was crazy. Them beating the not only being sweeping that Lakers team. That Lakers team is like this year's Clippers team where they kind of expected to just walk into the finals they everyone expected Kobe LeBron finally um for, I will say though the biggest drawback and I love this Mavs run we didn't get Kobe LeBron that was yeah. tough that was tough and then he, he ruined Kobe LeBron Dirk also ruined like LeBron's like Jordan resume like he, that, he who would have known this random German dude him losing that series is by far the biggest Knock to his career, but nothing oh, about nothing about LeBron. Uh, I want to uh, bring him back to baseball. Uh, I'm going to save my the worst one for last. So the second one's the worst one for me is the 2003 Marlins. Much respect to them because the Yankees mm -hmm. had just beaten the Red Sox in seven. They've got Derek Jeter. This is their like this is their they're coming off of five straight of the, with Jeter's run and uh, or four straight in the late 2000s, late yeah. 90s, early 2000s, and the the Marlins with you know young Miguel Cabrera, AJ Burnett, Josh Beckett. They, they go out and they beat the Yankees. At 91 and 71, they make the playoffs. The Marlins are not a historically very good team. They're actually a historically very bad team. Yeah. And they managed to get all the way there and get it done. This reminds me of the literal 1980s Olympics like miracle team. No, yeah. It's a bunch of young guys who like, um, they just, you know, it's, I'm not gonna say it's a scrap together team because a lot of great names here, but a bunch of young guys just with someone to prove going up against, again, you want to compare it to the Patriots, like, this Yankees team was was good. Yeah. This is uh, the probably the best the Yankees could, like, get. In when, this. like, the Yankees and Red Sox in 03 were a lot like the Red Sox and Indians in 07, where it's like, whoever plays the Rockies is going to win. So, like, mm -hmm. whoever wins this game seven is just going to beat the Marlins in 03. And the Marlins Side. had had something to say about Side. that. Josh Beckett started started a long run. Um, yep. Moving into my the worst team, uh, this is a no-brainer. Once I had finally done the research, the 2006 Cardinals, I didn't realize, were 83 and 78. 83 and 78. This is the third worst record that's ever made the postseason in baseball, and they won the World Series. And we think back now, like the Cardinals went back there in 07, like they got Albert Pujols on that team. You think, like, that was a good team. But they came in as like the most underdog you can be. Like, the World Series the year before and after, the teams that won had close to 100 games. They won 83 games. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it sometimes only takes one championship to kind of turn everything around, but they were bad. They, they were bad. Let's not get it twisted.